Welcome and thank you for using my copper material for Blender 2.8. First, we have to get the material into our scene. From the main menu, select File, Link, pick the downloaded Blend file, then open Node Tree, select all of those elements by hitting A on the keyboard, and then click on Link from Library. Now we can assign the copper material to the object. I create a new material, remove the default shader, hit Shift A and pick Group, Chris P, Copper Manual, and connect it to the material output. In Eevee we also need to activate screen space reflections because we are dealing with a reflective material here. Out of the box the copper material gives you a brand new shiny copper surface. But we can adjust many material properties with these settings here. First we can modify the hue, saturation and brightness if needed. The copper colors also have some variation built into them and depending on the scale of your model and scene we can adjust the scale of the variation pattern here. And we can adjust the strength by setting the color variation value between minus one, which is no variations at all, and plus one, which gives us heavy variations. Another color variation is what I called oil, which adds these rainbow reflections and makes shiny new copper material look even better. Again, depending on the scale of the model, we can also adjust the oil scale here. The overall roughness of the surface can be set here and some variation in the roughness can be added with these values, again with the possibility to change the scale. When copper ages it builds up what is called patina, which is very rough, mostly green speckled surface with some yellowish areas. I can put patina all over the model by setting the patina map color to black and the patina amount to 1. For making realistic looking copper, we only want the patina in certain areas. Since this input here is a color map, we have several possibilities. First, we might have a texture map for the patina, or even manually texture paint the patina areas onto the model where desired. White areas will show the copper metal surface, black areas will show the patina. Second, we can use vertex colors. Here I'm vertex painting onto the mesh, again white for metal, black for patina. To use that as the patina map, I hit Shift A, input, vertex colors, and pick the vertex colors I created for the patina, and plug that into the patina map input. With the speed of Eevee, I can even vertex paint the patina onto the model with a real-time rendering in the viewport. And lastly, the quickest and easiest way to create a patina map is this. First I create a new vertex color set, then in vertex paint mode I select paint, dirty vertex colors. Now Blender uses a kind of ambient occlusion algorithm to detect vertices that are closer to other vertices and paints those darker. You can see that here. Without any manual work, Blender selected all the crevices for me and saved that information in the selected vertex color slot. Now we can very easily use that again as the pattern in a map. When using the dirty vertex colors feature, we usually need to put a color ramp in here and adjust the black and white levers to something that looks good. Using the patina amount property I can fade the patina in and out if I need to. The surface of the patina has that green yellow color speckles and is also very rough with actual bumps. This slider can again be used to adjust the scale of that patina pattern to match the model scale. When copper ages it not only builds up that patina in some places, it also changes color. The copper color age value up on top is for exactly that. Zero is brand new copper and one is very old copper. When getting older the surface also gets much rougher, so I need to increase the overall roughness. I also increase the color variation scale to get more of the effect all over. I take out the oil effect completely, play with the roughness variation and add more patina. One more very cool feature the copper material offers right out of the box is dust. With this value here I can add dust, which only shows up on the parts of the mesh facing upwards, that is on the C axis. This dust also behaves realistically. When we look at a dusty surface at an angle the dust is much more visible and covers the underlying material than when we look at the same surface straight on. Watch here while I rotate the view. Here the dust is really visible and now looking down on it we can see much more of the actual copper material. 
The dust particle scale can again be used to adjust the scale of the model and we can also change the dust color if the scene requires it. The last input is for plugging in normals like pump maps, which will be propagated to all parts of the material setup inside the copper node. Here is a bonus feature, the dust I just showed you comes in its own node group so you can add it to any other material as well. Here I'm using a regular principal shader. To add some dust, all I have to do is pipe whatever material I have through the crispy add dust node and get instant dust that I can adjust with these settings here. Hmm, we could even use this dust shader for a very simple layer of snow. The crisp copper manual node gives you many possibilities to create a copper material that looks good for your model and scene. If you don't want or need to adjust every detail by hand, here is the second bonus I have included in this material pack. The crispy copper auto node. This node gives you the same realistic copper look, but it is super easy to use. The first value is the most important one, age. This goes from zero, which is new copper, shiny, no patina, colorful reflections, to one, which is old, green, rough copper with patina. So all the manual adjustments I just showed you before can quickly be set with just one slider. This scale setting also adjusts all of the scale inputs I showed you based on the default settings. With U, saturation and brightness, you can still fine tune the copper metal color. The patina map still goes in here and you can still add dust and plug in custom normals. The last tip I want to give you or remind you of is don't forget you can plug textures or image maps into all of these inputs. This model I bought from Sketchfab comes with a roughness map that I fine tuned a little with a color ramp and used to drive the roughness of the copper material. Thanks for watching, have fun with this material and have a great day!